my name is Carol Dyer, and I am the Outreach Director for the Environmental Protection Information Center. And um, I guess I just, I actually was perceiving me talking more to the board than to such a big group, which is just awesome. But I just wanted to give a little personal introduction first to say that I've spent probably the last <laughs> for 20 years or so of my life working on uh, food production and um, food security issues and by farming and working in retail stores, uh, natural food <coughs> stores, and uh, really, really concerned about local uh, local issues. And I was, as I was preparing this, I was looking at you guys' website and stuff and saw that, um, saw your involvement with the, uh, what's it called, the Plan Green? Plan Green? Plan Green? Is that what it's called? And, um, and saw the theme of it, which was the rebuild, or excuse me, was the building, local, um, how does it go exactly? Um, building local self-reliance, that's it. And um, I just thought that was really apropos for this issue. And, um, and I, you know, personally, I just wanted to say to all of you in general that I think there's two real reasons why we should be trying to figure out solutions uh, for to to actually promote local self-reliance and number one is to basically create a, a resiliency for our local community to be able to survive this sort of ever-changing global economic situation so we can survive what's about to come or what's coming uh, and the other one is to decrease our kind of community-wide uh, carbon footprint and um, and I think that it's really super important that we look at everything we're doing, including the sources of our food and, um, and products that we're uh, consuming. Um, and that completely relates to the Richardson Grove project to me. Um, and I'm, while I'm not going to go deeply into the cost benefit of transportation alternatives, I did want to mention that to you guys first. Um, so I guess I just wanted to, um, actually it's funny because I think our presentations are kind of similarly strange how that goes. Uh, but I guess I just wanted to quote from the DEIR. By the way, the, the, way, the way the process has worked is this draft environmental impact report that came out last year, um, that's the only document we have to work on. So any changes that, sh that Kim might have alluded to or anything like that, there's no way we could publicly comment. We, could, can't, we can't comment any of those because they've not been published yet. Um, and they won't be published in a way that we have an opportunity to comment on. Whatever they come up with, if they decide to include our co comments or not, that's their decision, according to them. And that uh, that's what we're going to be left with. That's the deal. That is your hand that you're dealt. So I just want to be really clear on that um, so that you all understand that there's not a lot of choice in the matter once this FDIR comes up and what we're talking about six weeks or something. Uh, so back to the question is, what does Caltrans want to do? And I'm going to quote the DEIR. It says, so that two STAA trucks passing in opposite directions could be accommodated, accommodated and the prohibition for STAA vehicles would be removed and safety and operation of Route 101 would be improved while also improving goods movement. Okay, that's pretty straightforward, it seems like, right? That's sort of like exactly what Kim said. But I want to, I want to go ahead and deconstruct that just on two points. Number one is the truck prohibition issue. So I may have an analysis of what I think transportation alternatives should be for us here on the North Coast, and I may have my perspectives. But there is no, at this point right now, overall prohibition of STAA trucks coming into the county from the south end. The California legislator has provided exceptions for trucks to pass the Richardson Grove. STAA length trucks from the cattle industry go through the Grove every single day right now on a legislative exemption, as you probably all know because you all are so educated around here, it's ridiculous. So, um, and in that, right now, where things stand with that is that exception, uh, there has been, a, um, there's been a, an extension to that exception that, that runs out in January 2012. And that is something that there's nobody stopping that exception from continuing to be extended. So, um, so that's truck prohibition, number one. I think that's a myth that, that the trucks can't get in and out of the county um, as it is right now. Number two is the safety concern. And um, I really wish that my good friend Jeff Hadeen, somebody from the Coalition to Save Richardson Grove, was sitting with me because he does emergency response for the volunteer, PRC volunteer fire, fire, fire department, excuse me. And they do, uh, you know, emergency response to situations in the Grove. And he, he tells us consistently that they don't go to the Grove very often. 
they go other places where it's actually unsafe. The DEIAR claims the road needs to be widened because of collisions. We reviewed, uh, EPIC um, reviewed the California Highway Patrol's report, the most recent one that we could find, um, that, that was basically um, referred to in the Draft Environmental Impact Report, but this is what we actually found. Over a, for a, for a five-year period, there were only six accidents involving trucks in the stretch of 101 that is the project area, and two of those occurred within one minute of each other. Only one involved trucks going in opposite directions. According to the information we reviewed from the CHP, there has not been one accident involving trucks since June 21st, 2005. And the reason why I can look up my paper is because I've re rehearsed and said this over and over, because it continues to be this myth that, oh, this is the most dangerous part of 101. In fact, that's not what the numbers say. Um, and again, as far as the livestock STA trucks, which are allowed to go through the Richardson Grove, according to the CHP report to the legislature, there were no collision citations, verbal warnings, complaints, or highway incidents reported. So um, I guess I wanted to just reiterate that, um, so when we're looking at this issue, this is not a safety issue, uh, and this is not a truck prohibition issue. Maybe there are advantages for industries that rely on STA trucks, uh, in the sense of having full access to Humboldt County, especially access through the county. Um, and I wish that Ken had an opportunity to speak, uh, Ken Miller here, because he has some really great points on that issue itself. But as far as EPIC, and that's who I'm here tonight to talk on behalf of, um, we are especially trying to point out the inadequacies of the EIR, the Environmental Impact Report that we have to work on the draft. Um, this, uh, this document is, uh, I don't know if anyone here has had the chance to pour through the exciting pages. I have many times, and it's just 